Hey everyone. Ever since I did my micro power station video, I've been scouring Amazon for the best compact solar panels that you can use between 10 watts and 80 watts. I ultimately chose panels from Flex Solar, Sunjack, Big Blue, and Powerness because they offer monocrystalline panels with a rugged ETFE coating, IP65 or better waterproof ratings, all in a compact and lightweight package that's fairly priced. I tested a few other brands too, but I specifically didn't include Goal Zero or BioLite panels because they're not a good value and seem to have very average output. And just a quick disclosure, I purchased quite a few of these panels myself, but then I did reach out to manufacturers and ask for samples. So some of these were given to me as review units and other ones I purchased. Let's jump right in with my recommendations first. And if you're interested in why I chose these particular panels, keep watching the video. Let's jump right into our first category, which is small solar panels that can charge your phone in a lightweight and efficient package. So the best ultralight panel to charge your phone is the Big Blue Solar Power 10 watt panel that comes in at $40 and has a kickstand, port covers, and really solid output. My top recommendation for charging a small 10,000 milliamp hour USB power bank the Sunjack 15 watt panel comes in at $60, has amazing build quality, and a pouch for your cables and to store your power bank. My upgrade pick is the Big Blue Solar Power 20 watt panel that comes in at $66, has a kickstand and port covers. My pick for a large USB power delivery power bank like the Anker 737 is the Flex Solar 40 watt panel that comes in at $84. It's compact and lightweight with 18 watts of USB C output power. My upgrade pick is the Big Blue Solar Power 30 watt panel that comes in at $90. This has a kickstand, port covers, and the same 18 watt USB C output. If you're looking for the absolute best USB-C power delivery output, look no further than the Sunjack 60 watt panel. Now this costs $170, but you get a really solid 30 watts of PD output, really good DC output, and just overall super beefy construction. If you're looking for a panel to charge a small power station like the Anker 548 or EcoFlow River 2, check out the Powerness 80 watt panel. For $160, it's packed with features like dual kickstands, LCD display of the power output, and comes with adapters for many popular power stations. If you want to jump into the details of each of these categories, use the chapters to hop to that section. Let's talk about brands first, to talk about the features that make each unique. Flex Solar is a no-frills design that's lightweight and offers low prices. It has a nice ETFE coated monocrystalline panel. These are built from smaller panels connected together, which is compact when folded, but higher power models are quite long. It has a simple junction box on the back with no port covers. It's positioned in such a way that you have easy access to ports on the end for plugging things in. There's cutouts on the corners for connecting bungees or the two included carabiners, but no grommets to protect them from tearing. There's no kickstand or other fancy features. There's no cables included, but it does have an IP67 rating, but no specifics on how they waterproofed it. It has a 12 month warranty and is made in China like all the other panels. Sunjack has really beefy construction that feels super rugged. It has cutouts on the corners from the smaller panels and metal grommets on the 60 watt panel. It uses magnetic closures, which is satisfying and easiest to use of all the panels. There's no cables included, and it has IP67 rating with a sealed junction box, coated PCBs, and waterproof ports. These panels include a mesh pocket with elastic straps to hold power banks and cables, which is a really handy feature. These are designed in California with US support and a 12 month warranty. And the thing I like about Sunjack is they're a mission driven company that donates to nonprofits and really seems to care about the environment. Big Blue has ETFE panels with a fancy coating from Japan, there's more visible bus bars than the other brands. The ports have rubber covers to keep water and dirt out, except on the largest 30 watt model. All include kickstands, which give you extra power and are a really clutch feature. All models have metal grommets in the corners, which is really great. Snaps are used to keep it closed, which is more of a hassle to use, but is certainly the most secure. These have a thin fabric layer on the outside that I don't like as much as the Sunjack panels. It feels a little bit less rugged. Big Blue panels have a 24 month warranty, which is the best of the bunch. Powerness has a super premium design that's rugged and quite rigid. 
they only offer larger panels in 40, 80, and larger sizes. It is a bifold design, which is more like a larger 100 to 200 watt panel, but smaller, and it has magnetic closures. There's integrated dual kickstands to keep the panel straight, but the smaller panel is fixed at 45 degrees, which can be a little steep. The big feature is it has an LCD display to show you the voltage and amperage for each port, DC, USB-C, USB-A, which is really helpful to get the most out of the panels. There's a zippered compartment and it includes a DC cable with three barrel connector sizes in four, six, and eight millimeter to plug into most popular power stations. There's an integrated USB-C cable and a USB-A port, but both are typical five volt, 2.4 amp outputs. There's no quick charge or power delivery. These are definitely best for DC output for small power stations. Powerness comes with a 12 month warranty. Let's jump right into our first category, which is small solar panels that can charge your phone in a lightweight and efficient package. You need to collect roughly 15 to 20 watt hours of solar power to fully charge your phone in a day. Directly charging a phone into the solar panel is only recommended if you're looking for something super lightweight, like if you're backpacking. The Flex Solar 10 watt panel is a super basic bifold panel with just USB-A output. There's no kickstand or other special features, but it's very lightweight at 336 grams and costs $40. Unfortunately, I was only able to get a peak of 6.7 watts or 67% of the rated output under ideal conditions, which isn't enough power to get the job done. I like how lightweight this is, but it simply falls short. The Big Blue Solar Power 10 panel is also a bifold design that adds USB-C output, a kickstand, port covers, all at the same $40 price. But it is heavier at 500 grams. It has much better output at 9.4 watts from USB-C and 9 watts from USB-A, which is more than 90% of its rated power and enough to charge up a phone under sunny conditions. But keep in mind, the output can drop to four to five watts if conditions are hazy or cloudy. So a 10 watt panel doesn't give you much headroom. The kickstand design is a bit odd because it's placed on one side, so it's a bit floppy. And I've noticed that after a few hours, the panel is now misaligned when it folds because of the way the unsupported side droops. It's not a showstopper and is still my pick for directly charging a phone because of its impressively good output and 24 month warranty. Now I heard that some solar panels had trouble reconnecting to the phone if a cloud passed by, but I tested all the brands in this video and all of them immediately reconnected to the phone once there was enough sun. Now, directly charging your phone from a solar panel isn't really the best idea because that means your phone is out in the hot sun all day. It could potentially get rained on. I think a much better option is to get a small 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack. They're very lightweight and affordable, and you can charge that with a solar panel and then charge all of your devices whenever you want later off of battery power. These batteries are around 40 watt hours, which is more than double the capacity of a phone. So we need to have a bit more solar power to charge it up. The Sunjack 15 watt panel is my pick for this because it has great build quality, magnetic closures that are super easy to use, a 12 month warranty, integrated pouch for cables and your power bank, and will give you a steady 10 watts of output from USB-C. It costs $60 and is 597 grams, but since this has 50% more power than the 10 watt panels, it has more of a buffer to deliver 10 watts of USB power even under less than ideal conditions or high temperatures and has excellent shade tolerance. I wish this had a kickstand, but it's fairly rigid, so it's easy to prop it up. The Big Blue Solar Power 20 watt panel is my upgrade pick because it adds a kickstand, covered ports, 24 month warranty, and is a bigger panel at a cost of $66 and is only slightly heavier at 710 grams. It's limited to 10 watts of output from its USB-C and A ports, which is basically the same as the Sunjack, so the extra 5 watts of solar power will only translate into more reliable output in adverse conditions. The kickstand design works much better on this trifold panel because it's in the center and the small panels stay fairly rigid. It has snaps to keep the panel closed that are secure, but more annoying to use than the magnetic closure on the Sunjack. Both are excellent choices and will fill a small power bank in about 4 hours. I also tested the Sunjack 25 watt panel, and although I really liked its features and construction, I feel like it's a bit limited by its USB ports that only deliver 10 watts. The larger panel gives you more headroom for poor conditions, but it's probably overkill for pretty average USB outputs. Like other panels, connecting both USB ports don't seem to give you full power from either, so I think their 15 watt panel is a much more useful size. 
Now I started this whole journey earlier this summer when I was working on my micro power system and I needed a solar panel that could charge my Anchor 737 efficiently in just a few hours. At the time, I chose the Flex Solar 40 watt panel because it folds up in a very compact size since it has six small panels. It supports USB-A with Quick Charge 3.0, USB-C PD at 30 watts, and has DC output in a package that weighs 1.26 kilograms and only costs $84. It's a very basic panel design, so that means no port covers, kickstand, or pouch. It's just a panel and a junction box, but that makes it compact and fairly lightweight. DC output is a respectable 32 watts that only dropped to 31 watts in the hot sun. USB-A output is pretty basic at 10 watts, but I was impressed with the USB-C PD output at 30 watts. However, in extended testing, I noticed that the PD output would plummet from 30 watts when cool to just 18 watts when in the hot sun, which is a massive drop in power. This is a great panel for its size and price, so it still gets my budget recommendation, but the top pick is now the Big Blue Solar Power 30 watt panel because it adds a kickstand and weighs less at one kilogram, but costs a few dollars more at $90. I know, it's only a 30 watt panel and the specs don't seem that great on paper, but this panel over delivered across the board. I measured 31 watts when cool, and 27 watts when hot, which is only 4 watts less than the Flex Solar 40 watt panel. The USB-C is only rated at 15 watts, but somehow consistently delivered 18 watts, even when hot, and has a pretty typical 10 watt output from USB-A. So this basically performs the same with DC, USB-A, and USB-C as the 40 watt Flex Solar panel, but it's quite a bit taller and thinner because it's only a trifold design. Since both perform the same and are roughly the same cost, it may come down to form factor preferences, but I think the Big Blue edges out the Flex Solar by a bit, mostly because it doesn't overheat and drop its USB output. The PowerNest 40 watt panel is unique in the size class because it has the same bifold panel design with magnetic closures as a larger 1 to 200 watt panel with dual kickstands, zippered cable compartment with integrated cables that has tips for 4, 6, and 8 millimeter plugs that will cover most popular power stations. There's a built-in USB-C cable, USB-A port, all in a 2.2 kilogram package that only costs $90. The coolest feature is this has a display that shows you the voltage and amperage for each of the individual ports, which is incredibly useful. DC output was very good at 34 watts, that dropped to 31 watts when hot, which is the same as the Flex Solar 40, but I noticed its output dropped to zero if even partially shaded. For charging a power bank like the 737, the USB-C and A are limited to 10 watts, so it's not a great fit for this application, so it lands in third place, but has excellent construction features overall. In the final category, we're looking at larger panels that are 60 to 80 watts and can be used to charge a small power station like the Anchor 548 or EcoFlow River 2. And this is great because you don't necessarily need a 100 or 120 watt panel to fill a small power station in just a couple hours. For this, I looked at 60 to 80 watt panels. The Sunjack 60 watt panel is the undisputed USB champ because it could deliver a rock solid 28 watts through USB-C power delivery in a wide range of conditions and was the only panel I tested that could give me usable power from both USB ports at once. With 25 watts on USB-C, and 6 watts on USB-A. It's a beefy quad-fold panel that weighs 2 kilograms and costs a premium $170. Like other Sunjack panels, this has a pouch for cables and incredibly beefy construction, but lacks a kickstand or port covers. For a power station, you can use USB power delivery to charge, but DC will give you more output at 44 watts. The AllPower's 60-watt panel looks good on paper, with 60 watt USB-C power delivery output, but this one was a major disappointment, with PD output only at 27 watts, which is half of its rating. DC output was 41 watts, and it has a bulky case with way too much material, cheap PET looking panels, and just an overall floppy design that makes it impossible to angle. It's heavier and much larger than the Sunjack 60 watt at 2.4 kilograms, and costs the same $170. I just really didn't like this panel and sent this back to Amazon in a hurry. Stepping up in size is the Elekenta 75 watt panel. This is definitely a budget panel at only $100, but it has a nice bifold design with magnetic closures, dual kickstands, 
and comes with a lot of cables and adapters, including an MC4 connector, but that adds up to a heavy 3.3 kilogram package. I was hoping this would be a high value option, but it only output 49 watts through DC. Worse, it really struggled with USB power delivery output. It could charge my River 2 at 19 watts, but I couldn't get it to charge any of my power banks. So I think there was a USB-C power delivery negotiation issue going on. I even got a second panel to make sure it wasn't defective, and both performed the same. USB-A is a solid 11 watts, but its PD output and average DC output means this is only good for budget shoppers. Pyronus 80 watt panel is a bit lighter at 3.2 kilograms, and is a scaled up version of the 40 watt panel I like so much. It has a bifold panel design with dual kickstands, zippered cable compartment with multiple adapters, built-in USB-C cable, USB-A port, and a slick display that shows you the power output per port. Its $160 price is a good value considering its build quality and features. I measured an impressive 69 watts of output, but that did drop to 59 watts when hot. USB-C and A are pretty standard at 2.4 amp ports, and they both put out around 10.7 watts, which is solid but unremarkable. The great build quality, tons of features, and solid DC output makes this my top pick for charging a small power station. So this is not a one size fits all, and that's why I came up with these different categories. You need to think about what features matter to you most and choose a panel accordingly. I wanted to talk about some of the things that I found along the way that sort of surprised me. USB-C and power delivery specifically requires a negotiation between your device and the solar panel, and sometimes things can go horribly wrong and you'll end up with getting less power than you're supposed to or no power at all. All I can say is it's really worth having a power bank that has a display on it so you know what's going on inside. And that's really why I like the Anchor 737. If you don't have a power station with a power meter on it, that's okay. I found this really great USB-C cable that has a built-in power meter. And I found it to be very accurate and it pretty much matched my really expensive USB meter within a half a watt. The next thing I learned is although there are two USB ports on many of these panels, you don't get double the power by using both ports. In fact, I found that when I plugged in both ports, I got pretty much the same output as one port, just divided in half. So no, I don't know if that's because I wasn't getting ideal conditions or there were weird negotiation things happening, but I saw this across all the brands and panels that I tested. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're shopping for a panel and you see the wattage of the panel, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the power you're going to get. First of all, these panels at best give you around 75% of their rated output under normal conditions. Second of all, you're going to be limited by the power that the USB ports can provide. And lastly, this is the thing that really surprised me most, is just how much heat can impact output. So when you're testing these things, you really need to test them after an hour in the sun once they've fully heated up. And in some cases, I found the USB circuitry would overheat and dramatically reduce the output. All right, well, I hope this helps you decide on the best solar panels for your needs. Links to all the products mentioned in this video are down in the description. All right, everyone, till next time. Thanks for watching.